makes your garden grow water and sunshine what makes your spirit grow knowing that should be mine what's up freedom lovers welcome to freedom homestead i'm tangy and today i am doing something that i love to do which is canning uh, this video is part of a collaboration that was started by my good friend Lisa over at Sutton's Days and she's calling it Jar It Up January. Why? Because during the entire month, one of 11 channels will be bringing you a canning recipe. So by the end of January, you will have 31 different recipes that you can try in your own home. Before I get into what we're doing today, I want to tell you a little bit about why I love to know how to press your can in case you're thinking about getting into it yourself. One, I love that I can control the ingredients in the foods that I feed my family. Two, is that I love that I can take advantage of sales on meats, vegetables, dry beans, things like that to can and make shelf stable foods for my family. And lastly, I love that I have shelf stable food that all I have to do is heat it up serve it to my family. I don't have to worry about the power going out. I don't have to worry about things like that. I know that I have homemade food, shelf stable, ready to go. It is the Homesteaders fast food. Okay, so what are we making today? We are making minestrone soup and I'm gonna be using the recipe out of the Amish canning cookbook and it's found on page 192. All right, so I'm gonna bring you in and we're going to can up this delicious soup that will be ready in minutes whenever you're ready to serve it to your family. The first step in making minestrone soup is you are going to take some dried white beans. You can use cannellini beans. These are great northern beans. This is one cup that I have sorted and rinsed. Now what do I mean by sorting? A lot of companies, whenever they are bagging up their beans, they don't do a really good job sorting them for you. So these are the kind of things that you're looking for. You will find, I just found this in what I was sorting. That's a piece of gravel. Sometimes you'll find beans that don't look very appetizing. And sometimes you'll find beans that are just broken or split and you can sort those out. So you want your beans to be pretty and whole and just look very, very nice and appetizing. So that's gonna go in my pot. And then we're gonna cover this with an inch or two of water. We're just gonna cover it then we're gonna bring it to a boil on the stove, let it boil for two minutes. We're gonna cut it, uh, cut the heat off, take it off the heat, and then we're gonna cover it and let it sit for an hour. So what we're doing is we're kind of doing a pre-soak. All right, so we're gonna take this to the stove. That has been boiling now for two minutes and I've just cut the heat off. So now we're just gonna cover it and set it off the heat. Okay guys, it's been an hour. Let me show you what we're gonna do next. So now that it's been an hour, you can see that the beans have essentially doubled in size. So we're just gonna strain these off. We're gonna give them a good rinse. We're gonna return them back to the pot and we're gonna add two quarts of fresh water. There's one, there's two. So I just returned my pot back to the stove. I've turned the heat on to medium high and we're gonna let this come to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're gonna reduce the heat to a simmer and let it simmer away for 30 minutes. While we wait on the beans, we're gonna go ahead and prep the rest of our ingredients for this soup. So let me show you what you need. Okay, so here are the ingredients that we're gonna be prepping for our soup. The recipe calls for three carrots that have been peeled and cut into half inch lengths, um, but we are gonna be using baby carrots. So this is about the equivalent of three carrots. Um, it also calls for a cup of potatoes that have been peeled and diced. It calls for four cloves of garlic that have been minced, and then one onion that's been peeled and chopped. So let's go ahead and take care of that.
cutting these potatoes, I want to show you what we're going to do to prevent them from turning gray while we're uh, prepping all the potatoes. So in my bowl, I'm going to add a quart of cold, fresh water. And to that, we're going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice. This is just some organic pure lemon juice. So now we're just going to peel and cube our potatoes and put them into our bowl. And remember, we just need a cup. Okay, so now we're ready to get everything in the pot. As you can see, I've already got my onions, garlic, carrots in here. Um, the recipe calls for two pounds of tomatoes that have been skinned, cored, seeded, and chopped. I don't have that. What I'm going to be using is this uh, diced tomatoes with basil, garlic, and oregano. It gives this soup an incredible flavor. I'm going to use two cans and I'm going to put them in there, juice and all. Um, it also calls for two quarts of chicken stock or chicken broth. Um, I'm going to be using this store-bought roasted chicken broth and it has a phenomenal flavor. You can definitely use homemade if you want to. I just have some homemade um, turkey broth on hand and I didn't want to use that for this. So I'm going to be using this. Oh my goodness, those tomatoes, you guys, smell so good. The recipe also calls for a cup of kale or spinach that has been chopped. So we're just gonna throw that in here. This is just some baby spinach. I'm gonna go ahead and strain the potatoes and get them rinsed really quick before we add them in. Okay, so there are our potatoes. The recipe also calls for three cups of green beans that have been cut into half inch lengths. And I don't have fresh or frozen green beans. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add a little bit more chicken broth. And when I heat this up for my family, I will add in some canned green beans. Doesn't that look so pretty? Okay. So now we're gonna add seasonings, and this part is totally optional. Some folks like to season it while they're actually heating it to eat, but I like to go ahead and just add it before canning, so it's one less step. Okay, so it does call for a tablespoon of salt. I'm actually gonna use half of a tablespoon because a tablespoon just seems like a lot to me. Um, so we'll use half a tablespoon. This is uh, canning salt, pickling salt, kosher salt, whatever you want to call it. It's just uh, kosher salt that is not iodized. And then the recipe also calls for a tablespoon of basil, and I'm not going to use that much either um, because uh, of the canned tomatoes that had the basil already in it. Um, this is basil that we grew in our garden a couple of years ago. We dried it and then ground it and it is still extremely fragrant and so delicious, okay? And the recipe also calls for two teaspoons of pepper, which again, I'm going to omit and just include that whenever we um, cook it to eat. All right, guys, this is ready to go on the stove over medium-high heat, and we're going to bring it to a boil and then lower it to a simmer, and we're gonna let it hang out at a simmer for 10 minutes. We're waiting on our soup to finish up and while we're doing that I'm going to go ahead and gather up the rest of my canning supplies. So what we need are seven quart jars, seven lids, seven bands. You're also going to need a jar lifter, your canning funnel, and you're going to need something to scoop out your soup and put it into the jar. And you can also see that I've got my pressure canner on the stove with the recommended amount of water from the manufacturer. I use a Presto 23 quart pressure canner. Now, one thing that I wanna go over with you very quickly is the importance of checking your jars every single time before you use them. I picked up this quart jar to use, and if you can see at the top right there is a crack. So we definitely don't wanna use this jar for canning. Now, I do have a video where I go into more details about how to start canning basically your fundamentals, and I'm gonna throw a link to that video up in the iCard above. I just go into more details, how to check your jars, how to check your seals, all of those things before you get started pressure canning. But really quick, I do want to go over how to check your jars. Just since I've already found that crack, I'm going to check my other ones really well. I tilt my jar toward the light and I just look 
Uh, at every single inch, I run my hand over it, just looking for any nicks or cracks, anything that will compromise my food. We don't want to do all of this work just for it to go bad because you missed a crack or a nick. Um, you definitely want to check your bottom and you also want to check the top. And you can check your top just by running your finger over the rim just to feel for any sort of nicks or any sort of rough spot that might prevent you from having a good seal. Okay, so it's almost time to pull the soup off of the stove and we're gonna get it in the jars. This is the, these are the beans that I have drained and we're going to evenly divide them up into each jar. This is just a 1 fourth cup scoop. This should get us pretty even. Okay, got a little bit more in here. All right, I wish you guys could smell this. This smells incredible. Okay, this part's a little bit more tricky to get it kind of even, but we're gonna use a slotted spoon to dip out the vegetables from our soup and then divide it evenly into our seven jars. Here we go. We're going to fill the jars with the liquid. Okay, we're going to fill these jars and leave one inch of head space. Okay, so if you saw, I actually ran out of broth. So what I did was I heated up, um, I had one quart of broth left. I also added two quarts of water and some chicken base and some tomato bouillon. I went ahead and seasoned it with basil and oregano and garlic powder, hopefully getting it as close to what I've already got in here as possible. Okay, so now we are going to resume filling up our jars, leaving one inch of headspace. Okay, I'm just gonna stir these around. Okay, now that my jars are filled, this is just white distilled vinegar and I have a paper towel here, and I'm going to clean off these rims. I know they're filthy even using my canning funnel. I am a messy canner. Okay, I'm gonna take what I've got left in here, and I'm gonna pour it into my pressure canner because we have hard water, and that will prevent mineral deposits on my jars. In this bowl, I have hot water with my lids. And we're just gonna place these on the jars. And now we're gonna put our bands on. And you wanna put your bands on fingertip tight. Just means you're not cranking down. I actually tightened my lids too tight the last time I canned and I had to use like a jar wrench opener to get them out. So now they're ready for the, the canner. My canner has been preheating over medium heat. And now we're going to put on our lid. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit to get this going. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to let this vent for 10 minutes. What does that mean? It means that this is going to come up to a, to a high boil and St a steady stream of steam is going to start coming out of this valve. When it starts doing that, that is what we call venting, and we're going to let it do that for 10 minutes. So what it's doing is all the pressure that's building up in the pressure canner is pushing all of the air pockets out, which is essential to having a safe canning experience. So we're going to let this vent for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to put on, for a Presto, after 10 minutes, you're gonna put on your weight. Now, where I live with the elevation, I need a 10 pound weight. You want to check 
your manual for your elevation, which you can figure out what that is by either calling your local county extension office or you can Google it. So wherever you're canning, that is what determines the weight that you use when you can. The timing is determined by what you're canning. Since we are canning beans, then we are going to can these quart size jars for 90 minutes. Okay, so when we come back, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's venting. Okay, so as you can see, it is a steady stream, and I've got my timer set for 10 minutes now. All right, guys, my timer just went off, and you can see I'm still steaming pretty good. So we're just going to put our weight on there. And now what's going to happen is pressure is going to build up, and when it does, this valve right here is going to go up and then it's going to hold in pressure. As that pressure continues to build, our gauge is going to travel up to the 10. Usually I can keep my uh, gauge between the 10 and 11, which is fine. As long as your weight does not dip down below your recommended PSI for your elevation, you're in good shape. So when I get right there at the 10 and it holds, then we will start our timer for 90 minutes. When we come back, 90 minutes will be up and I'll show you what we do next. All right, friends, my pressure gauge has got right where I said it would. So I've already got my timer going. We've got dinner going. That is south of the border chicken soup, which I canned in a recent video and I will uh, share that in the description box below. My daughter is cooking up some grilled cheese and we're just gonna wait for this to get done. All right, guys, as you can hear, my timer just went off. So we're cutting off the heat to our canner, and I'm going to move this to the other side. So where we go from here is we're going to let this hang out until the pressure naturally drops. So what that means is we are going to leave this lid on and you're going to watch as the gauge drops down to zero and then this valve is going to drop. When that happens, we are going to take off our pressure weight and then we're just going to let this hang out for about 20 minutes. And when we get to that point, we'll come back. Alright friends, so this has been hanging out and the valve just dropped. So I'm going to lift this off and we're gonna let this hang out for a couple more minutes. I'm gonna come back, I'm going to take the lid off and just kind of set it off to the side, just crack it a little bit, and let it sit for probably another 20 minutes, and then when we come back, we'll take these jars out. Okay, so we're gonna let these hang out overnight, and when we come back, we'll see if they sealed, which it looks like they all sealed, and uh, yeah. We'll get them cleaned up and put on the pantry shelf. All right, guys, it is the next day. I have checked the lids, every single one of them sealed. I've got them labeled and cleaned up, and they are ready for my pantry shelf. So I'm gonna take them to the pantry and let them hang out for whenever we're ready to use them. I will personally, for my family, add pasta. I have boxes of Ditalini pasta, which is perfect for minestrone. Um, and I will also add the green beans, like I told you guys, because I didn't have frozen or fresh green beans to add while I was canning it. So I'll just add it while I am cooking it. Um, so yeah, pasta, green beans, and then, you know, if you get a wild hair and decide you want to add some mushrooms, but maybe you don't necessarily want to add it while you're canning it, you can do all kinds of different things. This is a really great, versatile soup. I personally have uh, fond memories of minestrone soup. My dad used to make it with hot sandwiches and we would have family movie night. It was awesome. Don't forget to check out the playlist down below. Keep collecting these recipes throughout the month of January and until next time.